I was going to read some more of my notes from 1995, but there is virtually nothing that uh, isn't extremely embarrassing and cringeworthy and of any intrinsic value. Um, so I'm going to jump forward to 1996, January. I've got a helper with me today. This is this is Finlog, the real Finlog. A little bit camera shy, but um, he uh, he likes getting attention, and he's purring. I don't know if you can hear him purring. Finlog, you gonna purr today? Hmm. <laughs> right. Um. Tuesday, the 23rd of January, 1996. You can only think of and understand things in the terms of what you have learned in your life experience. This I concluded quite a long time ago, certainly a year. I believe that it is the true... I believe that it is true unless a higher life form communicates with you and imparts knowledge. Religions require you to believe the teachings of the wise ones without questions. For me, I find it hard to believe in something which I don't understand. I mean, I could not further spread the word of what they say unless I knew that it was 100% correct. I strongly believe in the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, wisdom and ignorance. I'd like to read up, I'd like to read up on some philosophy, particularly Goethe, of whom I've only heard praise. The very existence, or non-existence, of anything other than physical material life is a big question for me. I lean to the possibility that there is a spiritual world, but have so far in life not come across any evidence which would obviously affirm this to me. Finlag, you're a real distraction. I'm reading about the ancient Indian religion, which is very enlightening, but it doesn't strongly encourage people to think things out for themselves. Therefore, I don't believe everything or agree with all I am discovering. I think that refers to um, these little books here, which I was given after making donations to the Hare Krishna um, people. There's a couple more there. Um, which... At the time, I remember friends of mine saying, Ah, oh, don't read any of that, it's a load of rubbish. But I was still curious enough to um, want to know what it's about, and I found some interesting stuff in there. But as I wrote at the time, and as I still think, the fact that these organisations discourage you from um, questioning the organisation itself, um, that uh, is, is not a good indication that the, the whole thing is on the right track. Anyway, let me get back to what I was writing at the time. I'm going to skip forward a few pages and... Finlog! Why don't you just settle down? Right, Thursday the 3rd of February, 1996. I have finished reading Transformation by Whitley Stryber, a fascinating book dealing with visitors being superior to humans who contact selected people and, in a nutshell, frighten them to be rid of their fears, thus opening their minds and enabling their souls to leave the body as well as visiting different dimensions inexplicable in materialistic scientific terms. Okay. Like curing a phobia by being surrounded by that which you fear, Mr. Stryber implies that the same is possible with fear itself. My understanding is this. To transcend to levels higher than physical, you need to be able to conquer fear. The author tells of amazing experiences of meeting the visitors in fully conscious physical form and on a spiritual level too. I want to believe it, and have only one reason not to. That is, that I haven't observed any evidence, purely circumstantial, so to speak. I unfortunately have a great deal of fear, not least the fear of the unknown, and I fear that if I go into the woods at night alone and try to make a contact, this presumably being the method used by 
Mr. St Stryber. It's such a long time since I read that, I can't remember very clearly. Um, alone and try to make contact, I may experience something so terrifying that I'd never be normal again. I lack the confidence and bravery that I suspect is required. I also entertain the possibility that what I have read is incorrect and that no world exists beyond this material one. I don't believe... That's underlined. I don't believe that, and I certainly hope that human life is not the most intelligent. But hold on a minute. How can it be? If we were the most intelligent ones, then we would know how to create new life and understand all of the workings of nature. A very big assumption there that uh, the, the the whole concept of evolution where simpler life forms evolve into more intelligent life forms. I hadn't picked up on that particular meme in 1996. Back to the book. Surely, surely the above is a truthful statement. If so, then logically speaking there must be a high there must be higher life forms. How can they be contacted? And another thing, maybe the visitors described by Whitley are not the only ones superior. Perhaps the gods of religion also exist. But as I've said before, organized religion leaves me in a very skeptical frame of mind. Perhaps there was a similar planet with similar people on orbiting around a similar sun far away and a long time ago. Perhaps they had similar problems and came close to self-destruction. Perhaps they transcended a step at a time, the first step being to live in harmony with their nature, to control their populations and evolve into a better, kinder, more thoughtful society. Perhaps over the following millennia they discovered that they were not alone in the universe, and perhaps they discovered other, more primitive, evolving life forms on other planets not unlike the way they used to be. Perhaps also they discovered that they could visit these far-off places, but only in a spiritual dimension. Whatever that means. Perhaps they discovered that helping being... Perhaps they discovered that helping bring others onto the path of the good was their purpose in life. Who knows? Right. This next bit is off on a completely different tangent, um, and it's from Monday the 12th of February 1996. It has just occurred to me that the Sinn Féin leader, Jerry Adams, looks very much like, and then I mention somebody I know, but uh, didn't get along with particularly well at that time. On Friday night, the IRA bombed part of Canary Wharf in London and killed two people in the process. They have fucked up the ceasefire and initiated a great deal of headline news. I listened to quite a bit of Talk Radio UK, which is on the, on the whole quite good. Better than most of the drivel shown on television. I think I didn't really watch much television at that time. Listen to the radio more. But anyway, back to the book. There are numerous disasters going on around the world. A Boeing 757 went down with all hands in the Bermuda Triangle the other day, an area which incidentally has a higher concentration of gravity or some damn thing which causes the sea level to be lower than most other parts of the world's oceans, and it has nothing to do with the tidal rhythm. I have no idea where I picked up that um, nugget of what now seems complete bullshit, but um, that's what I wrote at the time. I read Earthworks by Lyle Watson, who describes many interesting phenomena and theories involving natural history. There is reference to a theory which should explain why humans are largely hairless, walk upright and mate stomach to stomach as opposed to doggy style. This theory suggests that 10 million years ago a certain ape colony became stranded on an island due to sea levels rising. Thus, over the following generations they had to rely more and more on hand-caught fish for food, thereby spending a lot of time swimming in water. 
Over myriads of years and generations these apes became very good swimmers and straightened their posture so that they could stand in deeper water whilst breathing. Fur does not insulate underwater, so gradually it thinned. Geologists studying our ancestors have not found any bones or humanoid remains dating between 4 and 10 million years ago, but it makes you rethink and try to comprehend why the likes of the Bible states that God created man in his own form. Then his form must be constantly evolving, just like ours. Um, I think back at that time I, I read a lot of wacky stuff. Um, some very interesting, but I didn't have much background um, knowledge to be able to critically evaluate a lot of it. So um, I still don't know whether there are no humanoid fossils between four and ten million years ago, old. Um, it's not a subject I'm particularly knowledgeable about, but back then I would have thought it, you know, read it somewhere and thought, oh well, book says it, so chances are it's true. Anyway, from me and Finlog, that's enough for now. I will do some more some other time. Cheerio!